We'll call a, call the 16th regular meeting of the council to order. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. Berg? Excused. Bonet? Here. Doyle? Here. Groff? Excused. Manny? Here. Montemayor? Here. Moody? Here. Perez? Excused. Rinfleisch? Here. Stephan? Here. Van Akron? Vanderweel? Excused. Wangaman? Here. Warner? Here. Wenninger? Here. Twelve present? Quorum's present. Alderman Warner. Warner. I thank your honor. I move that the minutes of the last common council meeting of November 3rd be approved and the same stand on as entered on the record. Second. Moved and second at the minutes of the previous council meetings and approved. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Pledge of Allegiance this evening we have one Cub Scout from Troop. 3827 and one Boy Scout from Troop 857 to lead us in a pledge. Would you come up front, guys? Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I just would like to share with the council and, and with the public that uh, the reason Alderman Groff is not here this evening is because his aunt passed away uh, last week and the showing is today and the funeral is tomorrow. And also, Mayor Schramm's father passed away over the weekend. And in that, I would ask that we just uh, extend a moment of silence and sympathy to their families. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Warner. Okay, we have one hearing this evening, and that's to add the east side of South 13th Street from Maryland Avenue to New Jersey Avenue, the west side of South 13th Street from Illinois Avenue to New Jersey Avenue, and both sides of Maryland Avenue from the South 13th Street to South 14th Street to the residential parking privilege regulations. Any interested persons wishing to be heard on that? Any interested persons wishing to be heard on a hearing? Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the hearings be closed. Second. Move to the second hearing be closed under discussion. All in, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Mayor's appointments. I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Betty Moody to be considered for the library board to fill the unexpired term of William Wangerman, which expires April 30, 2006, signed by the mayor. That will lie over. Public form, Pat? Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Susan Hundley. Susan, will you check if the microphone's on, please? Hello? I think it is. Can you hear? Okay. 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 Susan Hunley, 632 Michigan Avenue, Sheboygan. Susan, you're going to have to speak louder. It's still not coming through. Susan Hunley, 632 Michigan Avenue, Sheboygan. I'll never say never because here I am again. I feel I've always addressed the mayor and the council with the respect that you are all entitled to for the positions that you are elected to hold. So I am disappointed that at the last public forum, when Alterman Groff chose to comment on what I spoke about regarding room tax, his comments came after I had finished addressing the council and when I, when I could not make a clarification of what he commented on. To me, this seems as though he tried to get in a parting shot since he knew I could not come back to the microphone, microphone and respond. Personally, I think the public should be allowed to speak freely, respectfully, 
but freely at the public forum without comments coming from the council <coughs> unless those speaking are asked for clarification and given the opportunity to respond. To address Alderman Groff's comments, yes, I am a chamber member and did know about the contract with the city and the chamber regarding room tax. This contract between the city and the chamber is at the center of the notice of claim filed by myself and Renee Susha. Since we have been advised by our attorney that it is an illegal contact, contract, it makes no difference that the city and the chamber have agreed to the contract and both sides have said they are happy with it. It is still illegal. I collect this room tax from my guests, as does all lodging facilities in Sheboygan. Only lodging collects this tax, room tax, an additional 8% on top of the 5% Wisconsin state tax for a total tax of 13% added on to our room rates. The, tent, the in, intent of the room tax law is for overnight travelers to pay this room tax to a lodging facility for the lodging facility to turn the entire amount collected over to the city and then for the city after retaining their entitled portion in, Chipo in Sheboygan that portion is 20 percent and then turn over the remaining excuse me, portion that's 80 percent in Sheboygan to a tourism based entity our CVB to help attract more overnight travelers to our community it is to ben benefit all tourism based businesses within the community but it is only collected by lodging facilities. Right now, the current contract lets the city retain 50% of the room tax and the chamber 50%. According to state statute, this is illegal. This is what Renee and I have been trying to correct. We just want Sheboygan to follow state statute regarding room tax. Sometimes I feel as though I, I am fleecing my guests' pockets when I know that the 8% tax I am making them pay is not being spent within the intent of the law regarding room tax. I don't like charging this extra 8% to begin with, but it would be an easier pill to swallow if I knew that the money was going for promotion of tourism and our whole community would benefit. Many of us, including myself, in the community are very excited about the new Blue Harbor project especially those of us in tourism-based businesses. The future success of Blue Harbor will greatly benefit all of us depending on overnight travelers because our facilities will be used for the overflow from Blue Harbor's conventions. So we welcome Blue Harbor and want to see it become successful. Promoting Sheboygan with room tax funds would benef will benefit Blue Harbor, existing lodging, and all other tourism Sheboygan Cookies, never get done. by not was that a, a time? Well, you have time. I, I found out my cookies must oh. be well uh, because uh, it doesn't keep right time either. It's better early than late. <laughs> Please finish. I'll start at the beginning of the sentence time. if that's yeah. okay. That's fine. Please. Promoting Sheboygan with room tax funds will benefit Blue Harbor, existing lodging, and doesn't all work. other tourism in Sheboygan by not keeping Sheboygan the best kept secret in the Midwest. Rather, the city and the chamber should work with all existing lodging and Blue Harbor when it opens and use all room tax collected to promote Sheboygan. The city can use room tax collected by Blue Harbor to pay off the city-owned convention center, but then except for the 20% total room tax collected by all lodging, including Blue Harbor, 80% of the room tax collected should be spent on tourism promotion. Can I make a clarification or? Should I sit down? You have about 15 seconds. Any clarifications? Thank you. Thank you. Henry Capitello. I'll watch that clock instead. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. My name is Henry Capitello. I was here at the last council meeting to bring concern regarding a meeting that uh, the finance committee had met and had made a recommendation, which I wasn't notified. And uh, I was notified this last week, Friday, of a meeting that the Finance Committee was going to be having on the following Monday. Um, because there was such short notice and because I, my schedule was already had a uh, seminar for some families that 
were dealing f with the affordable housing project that we have, which had been scheduled for over a month, I wasn't able to, well, wasn't going to be able to attend the meeting. I called Alderman Groff, and um, he's not here, but I, I would like to personally thank him because he rescheduled the, uh, the business that I would have to attend for the meeting on the 24th. Um, I appreciate that. He didn't have to do that, I know, but uh, he did make that uh, uh, convenience for me. Um, and also, just to let you know that just because uh, people do come here and voice their concerns does not mean that we don't like Sheboygan or that we're anti-business or, or anything. The contrary, I think if we didn't care, we wouldn't be here. And um, someday maybe uh, you won't see us here. And that'll be because things are going like they should be. And um, the one thing I, I would like to say is that our organization, Home Inc., is doing a lot for the community. Um, I would like to invite any of the aldermen that would like to attend. There's, there's a Thanksgiving dinner that we're going to have at the uh, building on Superior Manor. Um, St. Vincent de Paul is sponsoring and paying for a lot of the uh, food that's going to be purchased. They have been tremendous. Um, it's being put on by uh, the St. Vincent de Paul, also the Bible study, which we have there on every Sunday at 6 o'clock. Also, the AA group that meets there every Tuesday is also involved with this. So if any of the aldermen would want to see what we're doing in the building, please, you're welcome to come. It's on the 23rd at uh, 530. Um, the other thing I'd like to let you know is that I did hand out packets of information to the finance committee uh, members. Please review this information because in there it will show how we have done uh, quite a few things for the city of Sheboygan. And in fact, we have, uh, if you look at the total revenue that we, we were managed to get from back taxes, from fines for the city, it could be almost $30,000. And we helped uh, individuals that had problems with, with uh, the elderly lady that is in, in, included in here. Her property had fallen in disrepair. One of her properties was condemned. She was on the verge of being uh, kicked out of the nursing home. We worked with her. We, we sold uh, some of the properties. We, we purchased a lot, which we are going to build a brand new home for a low-income family. Those are the kinds of things that we are doing in the community. And I live in Sheboygan because I love the community. Uh, I've worked all over the country in many different states. And I always come back to Wisconsin because I love Wisconsin. Um, my family is on the West Coast. I'm the only one here out of all my family that's in Wisconsin. And that's for a reason, because I enjoy living here. And I enjoy the people in Sheboygan and Sheboygan County. Um, and like I said, we are doing a lot of good things. Um, please look at the things that we are doing. You're welcome to come to the building, um, see the types of, of work that we are, are doing for the community. And also for people that want to have meetings, that need a place to meet, our facility is open for anyone. Anyone that wants to come and just give us a call. Um, our number is 453-9444, Home Inc. And we welcome anyone in the community to please come and utilize the building, that's what it's there for. Thank you very much. Melanie Cook. Hi, um, Melanie Cook, 2422 North 5th Street, Sheboygan. I'm the city's part-time computer operator. My job is the one being eliminated in the proposed budget. All of the work I do is work that needs to be done. If not by me, then by somebody else who's paid about twice what I am. There's, there's one person who only makes $5 an hour more than I do when she's there, but then the higher paid people have to do her work, and there's always two, have to be two people who know every job. In addition to the IBM systems and production and office work, the PCs and network require constant attention and user assistance, and I help with that or find the people who can. There are now three and a half of us doing this, and already it's not enough. Our programmers already dread the afternoon because they have to answer so many phone calls and can't get much of their work done. Often all three of those people are out on calls or on the phone with a user or a vendor like Microsoft. We have 18 buildings we have to cover from Plymouth to all ends of Sheboygan. There's probably no bigger waste of the city's money than having somebody who can't do what they have to do until someone fixes their computer. Not everyone can just get up and leave their desk and counter and go do it somewhere else, or if it's stuck, they probably can't move it anyway. Most urgent is usually the police department. 
They have to get something out in time for a court appearance or other scheduled event, or they've got a detained person in the room with them or any number of situations. Of course, the dispatch centers and emergency calls get first priority, but multiply this by all the offices and buildings they have, and without me there, whenever any one person is off, there's only going to be two people to cover all this. At the same time, everyone else has immediate needs also. The people who work with the public hate nothing more than when they're in the middle of processing a customer and the computer doesn't work. I believe I am now the only permanent person other than new hires who is being completely laid off. There is one other such person in the finance department, but that's a 20 hour a month job and not a primary one. Our union covering 10 departments, including the police dispatchers, was hardest hit and couldn't begin to cover them all. My job is roughly $18,000 a year plus partial benefits and would probably cost each taxpayer about $2 a year to keep. With all the concessions that union and management have given, I am asking that the city or the taxpayers now give something to save this job. I certainly don't expect the city to give up a fire truck or a programmer for it. They have been finding money, and if not, these things together would only cost each taxpayer about $6 per year. I have been here 19 years. I have a six-year-old daughter that I'm a big part of the support of. I realize none of you had anything to do with that, but I'm not just here working for a fancier retirement condo or nicer clothes. We just got out of a high crime neighborhood a year ago. I will probably have to be laid off next year anyway, but one year is a long time in the life of a six-year-old. We'd all love to see that big round zero in our tax increase, but when the prices of everything the city uses, from heat to vehicles to textbooks, is going up, to get that zero, we have to do things that are financially harmful, even if they look good at first. And that way of doing things is what got the state and a lot of businesses into these crises in the first place. Older people have had their savings destroyed by inflation. If they are losing their homes, I believe they ought to have an income and asset based limit on their property taxes, just like the homestead credit or heat assistance. For the rest of us, it's more a matter of being squeezed and frustrated everywhere we turn and feeling powerless to change, or in some cases, take it out on anything but the city. Plenty of propagandists are happy to help us believe that. My family pays $217 a month in taxes. I realize that this is the low end and most people pay about $282 a month. But, uh, that's the average. But looking at the ridiculous prices of houses, cars, income taxes, and everything else, which nobody else is pro hardly anybody's protesting about, I consider this $217 actually one of the better deals I get for my money. This is far less than what it costs just to educate one child per year, let alone all the other things included. There's so much resentment toward Blue Harbor and the marina that I have to wonder what people think we're going to have here as the factories move out. We have to have something besides a toxic dirt <coughs> pile on our prime real estate. The venture capital and the educated young people are going where the quality of life is. I am very concerned about the agendas of the people who are constantly attacking our governments and education. I lived through the 60s once and I'm hoping they're going to be over someday. I don't see where the people attacking our governments now are any different. I understand the resentment toward most of us who have paid health insurance. Self-insurance and years of giving up other things is what gave us that. Still, we're starting to give it up anyway. Many of us wanted to give up more, but we didn't win, and getting rid of my job will not change that. I would personally be happy to see my taxes raised even if somehow more working people could have affordable health insurance, but that isn't what the radio pundits and the majority seem to have on their minds these days. I'm glad to see more people getting interested in politics. I hope it's put to good use. Health insurance, for one, needs public oversight. Ross Perot made his first $40 billion stealing from Medicare. I don't think it's always the government stealing from us that's the problem. I think it's often the people who are stealing from the government, which is us. Thank you. Richard Sushan. Richard Susha, 303 St. Clair Avenue in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Mayor, Council, and Sheboygan citizens. I'm here to address and support the petition currently being circulated in Sheboygan. It's a proposal, and it states, this ordinance shall require the city of Sheboygan at the next scheduled election to hold a binding referendum for approval prior to the start of construction on any new city building project requiring a capital expenditure of $1 million or more. Excluded from this ordinance are infrastructure projects such as roadway repair, sewer and water system repair as deemed necessary by the city of Sheboygan Council. This ordinance would be in effect for only two years and it would not impede development and economic growth. It empowers the people, the citizens of Sheboygan, to voice their interests and concerns on major projects. 
through referendums, projects can still be introduced and passed. It will not affect necessities or infrastructure such as road repair or sewer and water system repair. Referendums are effective and common to the school system because the public is informed and involved. An informed and involved public can't be steamrolled by its leaders as what happened with the marina in Blue Harbor. The proposal also promotes fiscal responsibility by allowing the people to decide risk versus value. For example, the next time the city wants to give a developer a $4 million gift of taxpayer money, the citizens would be able to vote if the value outweighs the, outweighs the risk. Keep in mind that other fisc financial and cost-effective means are available for development, such as community block grants. A definition of democracy. Government in which supreme power is vested in the people and exercised by them or their elected representatives. I do believe in representative government. Citizens have the duty to exercise their views through representatives, but when the citizens are ignored, belittled, and even vilified, cause for such a citizen's initiative is warranted. It is unprecedented th that the mayor would squelch the voice of his citizenry before such an issue is even presented to the council. I feel that the mayor is misguided by a permeating arrogance, coercion, and abuse of authority at City Hall. He is clearly being influenced by special interest powers, powers that will not relinquish their control over City Hall. They are not elected by the public, and a majority don't even live and pay residential property taxes in the city of Sheboygan. For example, only 15 of the 39 who signed the opposition ad in the Sheboygan Press yesterday actually live in the city of Sheboygan. I challenge the mayor and the council to listen to the Sheboygan citizens, honestly encourage citizen involvement, courageously question powerful and influential outsiders, and govern according to the interests of the Sheboygan citizens. In closing, I encourage the citizens of Sheboygan to sign the petition thus exercising your right to, to the democratic process. Don't be intimidated. The voice of the people is right, just, and strong, and it will prevail. Jamie Schramm. Good evening. I again thank you for the opportunity to speak with you and for sharing your time. Six weeks ago, I stood before you and asked that as a community, we turn away from the politics of deception, diversion, and disrespect and embrace the traditional values of our community, hope, opportunity, and progress. It has been an amazing six weeks as the truth is being heard and felt throughout our community. Despite the criticism and criticisms and negative remarks made about our hometown, the sun continues to rise each day over Sheboygan. The end is not near, at least not for hope, opportunity, and progress. Our community continues to change, continues to grow, and continues to be led by all of you, the elected leaders of our community. Sheboygan has vision, Sheboygan has leadership. Maybe some people don't care for the direction our community is taking, but the goals and values of our community have never been clear. While not utopia and very far from perfect, our journey of excellence has witnessed some impressive accomplishments over the past year. We often hear what is wrong with our community. Let's take a look what's right about it. Sheboygan continues to be a first-rate community in which to live, work, relax, and raise our families. Expansion, Expansion Management Magazine even gave Sheboygan its highest ranking, five stars for business relocation. Our city's financial position remains strong, as evidenced by our AA bond rating. You all are working on, and I'd imagine struggling with, a budget that includes 2.2 million in spending cuts and holds the line on a property tax rate. This past year, you all ratified a new agreement with the Orange Cross Ambulance, thus continuing a partnership with the private sector. Blue Harbor, a $54 million addition to our community, will create an excess of 300 permanent jobs. The reconstruction of South Business Drive is nearing an end and continues our community's commitment to maintaining its infrastructure. Since 1997, there's been investment of over $500 million in our community. We continue to enjoy a first-rate public library, are served by professional and first-rate police and fire protection, and enjoy a top-notch park system. And our people, all of us, continue to be the finest asset to our community. So you can see, without looking very hard, there is much to like about our community. Oh, there are disagreements over issues, but our community continues to move forward. Our community is abuzz with the truth, with opportunity, and with progress. This past weekend, I once again drove through the mud, gravel, and concrete at the Blue Harbor site. I saw a lot of other people there, too. Their curiosity, a testament to the pride in our community, its future, and its vision. When faced with challenges, we have two options. 
We can turn inward, fear the future, view change as the enemy, and turn on one another. We can look over our shoulders, full of envy, and fail to recognize the importance of working together. The other option, however, is to embrace the challenges we face, see them as a never-ending journey of excellence, and know that because of our efforts, today will be better, tomorrow will be better than today. Our choice, yours and mine, is between being full of ourselves or being full of life. The only question is, which will you be? Thank you. That's five. That's five. Okay. And we move on. Alderman Warner, consent agenda. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file. All RCs be adopted, accepted and adopted, and all resolutions, substitute resolutions, and ordinances be passed. Second. Move this. Moved and seconded that all ROs be accepted and filed, RCs be accepted and adopted, resolutions, substitute resolutions, and ordinances be put upon their passage. Under discussion, Alderman Montemayor. Sorry, I'm not ready. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would like to um, pull forward 1612 okay. to see if the architect is here, could give us a few words on this. Are we up to 1612? Sure. You want to open the floor? Yes, please. Move to second, open the floor, under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Please step up the microphone. Hello everyone, my name is Scott Matula. I'm with um, LJM Architects and also uh, with River Park Place of Sheboygan, uh, which uh, we are presenting to do. I don't know if anyone has seen any of our uh, preliminary proposals, but we thought we had bring them along and, and show anyone who hasn't been able to, to see them yet. Scott, I don't know if they heard where this is going to happen. Could you repeat that, sure. please? This is uh, uh, happening on 10th in Wisconsin, uh, where the old uh, Kingsbury Brewery that uh, World Warehouse used to be. There's two vacant lands there, right, or two vacant parcels of land there right now. Um, and what we're uh, proposing to do is uh, a group of 27 uh, single-family and two-family condominiums. Uh, these will be designed in a way similar to maybe older homes or more traditional homes would have been, more, more of a bungalow style. Uh, they're also, uh, uh, we're going to set them up so they have universal design features, uh, being that uh, if someone gets compromised or has a harder time walking up and down steps or stuff like that, they can uh, Excuse me. They, uh, they can live in this house a little bit easier. Uh, master bedroom is going to be on the first floor. Uh, there's going to be wider doorways and a uh, slight difference from the garage height to the um, uh, main level, so it could be easy to uh, manage. Uh, I don't know if anyone has any other specific questions at this time, but uh, I'd be more than happy to answer them if they do. I have one question. Yes. And you're purchasing this land from the city of Sheboygan? Yes, we are. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful development. That will go very nicely down the riverfront. Thank you. You're welcome. OK, we'll have a separate vote on that. Do you need a roll call? Could you call the roll, please, Pat, on 1612? If there's any discussion. Is there any other discussion? OK, hearing none, would you call the roll call? Donay? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. 12 ayes. Motion carried. Okay, everything else on the consent agenda? Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I guess I would ask Tom Holton if he could just get, or Dennis Bauman just give us an explanation on document 16-6. That deals with Wisconsin Public Service Corporation and Sergeant Electric Company. They're gonna be doing some work in the community and I think it'd be nice to be able to get that out to the public so they understand if they see this. Uh, people around. Wisconsin Public Service, they're starting a, we'll be starting a program for uh, uh, wireless meter reading. It'll be done through a network of uh, modems. Uh, it'll be set like not 11 different uh, 
uh, centralized areas where your gas meter will be called to this area and be able to uh, give their meter reading, whether it be daily or monthly. So uh, they've been doing it in other cities and uh, we're up next. Thank you. Okay. Okay, if there's no other discussion, Pat, would you call the roll? Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. Mondo Mayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Bonet? Aye. 12 ayes. Motion carried. 1628, we'll hold for 1640. 1629 lie over, lies over, excuse me. 1630 through 32 lies over. To the November 24th. Pardon? Tell what meeting they're lying over to. They are lying over to 1124. 1633 through 1639 to be referred. 1640. By Alderman Bonet, approving amendment to purchase the sale agreement with the Sheboygan Memorial Post 9156 regarding possession of and occupancy of the property at 811 North 11th Street. Alderman Bonet. Uh, thank you, Mr. Honor. I'd like to ask for a motion for suspension of rules. Okay. Is there any objection to suspension? Alderman Bonet, proceed. Uh, yes, I'd like to make a motion to pass the uh, resolution and put it on passage. Move to second the resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Oh, I'm sorry. Mont excuse me. Alderman Montemayor, you had a question? But we're voting on 1640 right now, right? Yes. yes. And I just had a comment about something previous. Uh, okay. I, aye. Okay. Thank you. Moody? Aye. Rienfleisch? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Weninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. There'd be 12 ayes. Along with that, one is the RC 1628 uh, to file. To file. Right. Okay, Alderman Montemere, you had a question? Yeah. Yes, on 1634, about the found items by the city of employees, um, what did we do up until now about found items? It's in her correspondence. Well, we're going to do something different. What no, she, she wants to know if we should do, do something, something different. different. So she's, going, she's asking the ethics board to make a decision. Okay, and I, evidently I didn't get it straight. So I th I th it seemed to me she was asking, I don't know what to do. There because has been the, no the, procedure. The public, the, when the public finds something right. and it's not claimed within a year, the public gets it. Right. She wants to know if employees find something and it's not claimed in a year, do they get it or does, does it get sold for, and the money go into the coffers? Right. She wants to know what to do with city employees. This is the first time this thing has come up? I guess so. Okay, thank you. Okay. Glad we could clarify that for you. 1641 will lie over. 1642 and 43 to be referred. 1644 will lie over. 1645, by public protection and safety, recommending filing documents, submitting various license applications, denying, and denying beverage operator's license 6191 to Christina Figueroa for non cooperation with the committee and, non, and not revealing violations on her application. Alderman Doyle. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that we uh, accept and adopt the report of committee. Move to yes. second to accept and adopt the report of committee. Uh, is Christina here to speak in her behalf? No, Your Honor, we can proceed. Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll? Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Weinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weniger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Manny? 12 eyes. Motion carried. 1646 and 47 will lie over until 1124. 1648 by Special Marina Committee recommending <coughs> entering into the Harbor Center Marina Management Agreement. 
Alderman Bowman. Warner. Warner. Correct. Warner? Is it? I got Bowman, Groff, Warner. Okay. Yeah, but Warner. Your Honor, I make a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee and pass the resolution. Moved and second to accept and adopt the report of committee and pass the resolution. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, uh, this is authorizing entering into the Harbor Center Marina Agreement with Skipper Marine Development Incorporated and will continue our contract to basically operate the marina. Alderman Bowman. Well, thank you, Your Honor. Um, Generally, I don't get up and say a lot of things, but tonight I'm going to speak on this one. The uh, agreement is again with uh, Skipper Bud, and evidently they were the only bidder that was considered uh, more or less for the operation of the marina. Back when the marina first opened, everyone knows I was definitely not for the operator. And since the marina has become the marina and it's become a very beautiful place, we've experienced a lot of growth in the city. And of course, uh, more businesses have come to the city along with uh, other areas of development. But again, this evening, Your Honor, I will be voting against the operators for the contract the way it is proposed. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Would you call the roll? Moody? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Ankren? Aye. Wangerman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Wenninger? Aye. Bauman? No. Bonnet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. 11 ayes, 1 no. Motion carried. 1649 by seller agreements recommending filing documents amending ordinance adopting the revised city of Sheboygan compensation program for non-representative employees for 2004 and passing the attached substitute ordinance. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, I move the ordinance be put upon its passage. The ordinance is moved and second ordinance be put upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Warner. I thank you, Your Honor. I just, I just think it's important to note that our non-represented employees in the city have also stepped forward to help the city through this difficult budget year. I wanted to say something a few weeks back, and, and I failed to at that time, so I'd like to say something now. I think the city's non-reps will be paying 5% of their employee health insurance costs, and that's an increase of 2.5% over what they are paying now. And I think that's quite a significant change and it should be commended. In addition, the non-reps are also giving up 1.75% of their 2004 pay increase for half of the year. And in addition to that, 1.75% of the bi-weekly salary will be deducted and applied as an additional employee contribution to the health insurance premiums during 2004. I think it's important to note that. I think it's important to note that the non-reps are contributing a substantial amount to help meet our budgetary needs and their sacrifice and commitment to Sheboygan needs to be recognized. Thank you. I agree. Thank you, non-reps. Good job. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Ankren? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Bauman? Bonet, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Manny, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Moody, Aye. 12 eyes. Motion carried. 1650 and 51 will lie over. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My husband says I do talk a lot. He's a saint for 41 years. Um, on 1651, um, we're going to hope to change the wording of our franchise, our cable TV franchise, so that the money goes first to TV8, then to debt service, and the, to general fund, capital outlays. We want to amend it to also spend some of that money for general operating appropriations. I, Rich isn't here this evening. Could Mike Hotz explain that we can do this? It is legal. We don't have a contract. We can just change those words. Hang on. I 
I guess that's what I get for being here when Rich isn't. <laughs> uh, what, what this document is, it's brought to you by uh, fiscal pl Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee. Our franchise fee amounts to about $400,000 a year from uh, Charter. As Alderman Montemere had said, the uses, she detailed what the uses of it have been. And the document, uh, in order to help us out during these tough times, we're asking for a revision in addition to include uh, general fund operating expenses. The reason we can do that this year and this year only is uh, during the past few years, capital outlay requests uh, that have been approved have, have averaged around $360,000. That was the entire amount which was available through the cable fund for, for this purpose. Uh, this year when we went back to all the department heads notifying them of how difficult a year it is, telling them we wanted an absolute bare minimum uh, for capital outlay requests, they responded and we, we approved uh, $224,000 in capital outlay expenses. So that would, uh, that would leave roughly around $130,000 roughly, which could be applied towards general operating expenses. But we would need your approval, this change in the uh, general ordinance to accomplish that. Okay, that lies over till next meeting. 1652 to be referred. 1543, resolution by Alderman Van Akron, Wangaman, Winninger, accepting the revised agreement with the IAFF Local 483 Firefighters for 2003-2004. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, I move to ordinance be put upon its passage. So another one that has made some more giving to the city for helping the city with the services and your budget. Thank you. We have a motion before us under discussion. Alderman Reinflesch. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, last time we had, had looked at this, um, before we sent it back to, or actually we just held it over last time around, uh, the question had come up that it would cost the city additional $60,000 um, to meet the what, what they're proposing here. My question is, has the city found that, and where is that coming from? Michael, do you wanna? <laughs> do you want? Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, the answer is no, we haven't found it yet. Uh, but part of the money that um, will be allocated is that we do have uh, savings from, from all seven contracts. Uh, we know that, for example, the police department's coming through with, with some concessions, which they will be talking about later on this week. Um, there are also monies that are from the non-represented group um, that have not have been allocated yet, so they're still, we're still in a working stage on this. So. But we'll, we'll get there. Thank you. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I would, I would uh, make a motion that we open the floor. I know. Uh, Hang on a minute before we do that. Did you have something to say before we do that? Yeah. yeah. There's a little question on that $60,000. The way we come up it is 30000 And there's for three more firemen and another rig on 30000 is not a lot of money. Thank you. Chief has the right. You don't have to open the floor for him, and, and uh, President of the Union is also with him, so please step up to the microphone, both of you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Common Council. Um, basically, the 60000 actually $30,000. Uh, in my, when you talk to 5% across the board with six firefighters, in my deliberations with the mayor and the budget, I saved, uh, I took enough out of the budget to save three positions. Uh, that was pure money. But also what was saved is the severance payout for those three firefighters and an unemployment cost, which would, rate, which would come to about $31,600. So that was still in the savings to come forth. Uh, uh, Finance Director Gephardt happened to take that money and just apply it across the board for all city employees, which the deal we had with the mayor is that whatever you saved your department was supposed to be saved for us. So I feel that the $31,000 still is our savings which was given up, back up by the firefighters uh, through this proposal and my budget, leaving about $30,000 uh, that was the city has to come up with. 
but do nothing and don't replace the $30,000 and you will have to lay off three firefighters and those unemployment costs and severance payout would be about $30,000. And you might think, yes, well, you know, uh, you know, we plugged a hole for a year. My feeling is this, this year 2004 is a very important year. Number one, if we can provide the same service to the citizens at the same cost as we are for one more year, we owe it to all citizens to do that. In a time when the PGA is going to be bringing in hundreds of thousands of people here in Sheboygan in the, in the month of August, we happen to be uh, having uh, the state men's bowling tournament coming in with 10,000 men coming here uh, at bowling this year. We have two major projects of over $50 million each being built with 100 construction workers on each site who are walking around and steal 130 to 50 feet in the air, uh, trucks coming in out of the city. What a better time than to provide the same services we had at least for this next year. If 2005 is harder on us than we think it is going to be and we have to make some major cuts, then I think the cuts have to be made and priorities have to be checked, taken by this council. But it's before you for about the same cost. It's a wash as far as I'm concerned. Either you come up with $30,000 and you pay three firefighters for being laid off, or you come up with $30,000 and keep those three firefighters on duty, maintaining all the vehicles in the city that we presently have. Thanks, Chief Jeff. Did you have anything you want to say, add to that? Thank you, Your Honor, members of the council. Yeah, I would like to take this time to I think clarify some of the misconceptions that are going around about our offer. Um, I have spoken to some of you in committee meetings, um, but I understand there still are some inaccurate numbers that are being sent around in emails and, and communications. Uh, this was a very difficult decision for us to make. Um, to my knowledge, we're the only fire department in the state of Wisconsin that is doing this. And I, I speak weekly to the 50 other fire departments in the state. And I, I, to this point, we're the only ones that are doing this. Um, Ed Zurich and the city didn't just come to us during our, our past negotiations and say, here's your raise for 2004. Uh, the raise that we got came through giving, uh, going to higher drug co-pays, taking on residency, um, reducing our initial clothing allowance. Uh, we changed our work schedule. Uh, we limited the number of people that we can have off on vacation at one time, and that saves the city overtime costs. And we contributed to our health insurance for the very first time. So those were all concessions that we gave to get our raise for 2004. Um, as recently as 2001-2002, as when the city's general fund was growing, and it grew by 7% that year because of increased uh, expected revenues and decreased spending, um, the city didn't come to us and say, hey, we'd like to open your contract. We got a little more money to give you. Yet we're here now trying to do our part. Uh, so when I hear and I read statements in the paper that the firefighters need to give more, it upsets me a little bit. It upsets the people that I represent. And first, let me clarify what we're actually giving back. We're not giving back the one and three quarter pay raise that were due January 1st. What we're actually returning to the city is 1.82 percent of our raise. We're actually giving back over $62,000. For me personally, that's over $1,000 next year. And for some of you that are saying we're not giving a concession, trust me, that's a concession. When the city came to us earlier part of this year and said we need to lay off three firefighters, we got together as a union and came up with this plan. We said, Instead of laying off three firefighters, let's spread it out amongst all of us. We'll take the time off and in return, we'll return the pay to the city. So what we are offering is to lay each and every one of us off for 51 hours next year and in return, we'll return that money to the city. It's not 1.275 weeks off as it's been reported because you have to remember, firefighters don't work a 40 hour week, we work a 56 hour week. And that's without getting paid overtime, I might add. This is not about saving jobs. This is about saving lives. There's a few firefighters here, and everyone that's back in the, in the department, every one of those can tell you about a close call that they've had, of being in the attic of Jooms, hot, black, smoky, so hot that it destroyed my face mask, with flames all around me, and then finding myself 10 feet below in a hallway and not knowing how I got there. Of being on the roof of a Superior Electric, cutting a hole there, stepping back, and watching that entire roof fall into the fire in front of me. Or of going to a house fire on Superior Avenue on a Sunday morning, 
and having one of our firefighters fall through the hole in the living room floor, and then finding one adult and three kids, one of them the same age as my son, dead. That's why we need you to pass this addendum to our contract. This will keep all our fire trucks on the road next year. I, along with the other union presidents, realize these concessions are only a one-year fix, but it at least buys you a year at a very little cost, a, you, a year for you and the citizens to decide what services they really want and need for their tax dollar. And one more thing, I don't get the floor very often, and after this statement, I probably won't ever again. <laughs> the next time you get the chance, put the ambulance service in the fire department where it belongs. Because I'll bet that 13% rate increase they got this year, if you were collecting it, would look a lot better to you. And if you were collecting it, I don't know if we'd be standing here tonight. Thank you. That answer your questions? OK. Alderman Warner. I think, Your Honor, I, I did have something to say, but I think it's been said pretty much, but I'm going to say it anyway, since I took the time to prepare it. Uh, I guess a lot of attention has been paid to this cost-sharing and money-saving proposal by our firefighters. And some of it is a has been accurate, and some of it has not been. Uh, the bottom line is quite simple. This is a savings to the city that will help us meet our 2004 budget needs. And we know we have 2005 to work on. Period. This saves us money in 2004. Without this, we would have to find that money somewhere else in order to keep emergency service levels intact. The emergency response readiness, the level of emergency medical services, as well as fire protection, will be maintained largely because of this proposal. We have to remember and consider the fact that our firefighters are part of the city's emergency medical services and be very careful not to negatively impact a service that directly affects the lives of our citizens. Every city in Wisconsin is dealing with the same issues. Loss of state shared revenue, increased operating costs, and increased health care costs. The firefighters have been paying 2.5% toward their health care costs since last spring, second only to our transit, transit workers, who I believe started prior to that. As an example, in Appleton, the Common Council voted to increase property taxes by $58,549 and to use $147,000 in unused salaries to keep its fire department fully staffed in 2004. Why? Because of the safety of their citizens. I think it's significant. It shows Sheboygan is not alone in its effort to maintain critical emergency services that impact public safety of life and property. The fire department staff has already come up with over $150,000 in their budget reduction to save three firefighter positions. This additional savings will help to keep the other three positions intact. And most importantly, the safety of our city will not be compromised. I, for one, say thank you for coming forward. Our other unions have also done similar things to help with the budget and save as many jobs as possible. I think that's a good thing, and I thank them also as well as our non-reps. And I know this may rub some people the wrong way, and I do not mean to lessen the importance of any employee the city has. But time and again, people tell me not to support any cuts in emergency services and critical core city services, and we should all stand firm on doing all we can to maintain our core services. Again, thanks to the firefighters, the other unions, our non-reps for stepping forward. This is the extra mile, and we're all walking it together. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Warner. Alderman Doyle. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I'm sympathetic for, uh, towards the Chief's remarks, but I'd like to talk about the, the budget-making process here in the Common Council and, and how this is an example of uh, how it doesn't work as well as we'd like it to. Uh, at the start of the year, the Common Council and the Mayor have to make a decision. Do we want to uh, set priorities or do we want to have across-the-board cuts? Uh, the City clearly said we're going to do a hiring freeze and then we're going to have across the board cuts and the rationale was that we would spread the pain out evenly from uh, department to department. And that's been the plan all along. Then suddenly now the uh, different groups make concessions which I applaud. It does keep the wolf from the door for another year. 
but now aldermen are coming back and say, no, 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 we need to set priorities here all of a sudden and uh, <coughs> uh, change things and give preference to the firefighters proposal because that's a life and death matter. Now that's clearly uh, departing from the original plan. The aldermen knew that if we made these across the board cuts that the fire department was going to be affected negatively and why did this suddenly surface at the last minute? It almost resembles too often what I've seen in this common council that uh, we get in these kind of situations right at the end of the budget year and the aldermen put on their white hats and jump on their white horses and come riding to the rescue and go contrary to the original plan. I believe that we should start listening to what the taxpayers say. When you talk to them about are there higher priority services that the city offers, they'll tell you definitely yes. They'll tell you, if I talk to Ward 5 and 6 people, they say the fire department, I'm sorry, the police department is the number one priority in the, in the city. They don't want to see cuts in the fire department, but they are concerned about the cost of the fire department and whether that should be looked at. When you start looking at other services that the city provides, there's always someone who objects to any given cut, but there are cuts that could be made that would have the broad support of the electorate in Sheboygan. What are the consequences now of us not doing it the way the community wants and setting priorities, but doing a hiring freeze followed by a departmental freeze which we, where we supposedly treated all departments the same way? Well, the first thing that happens is the fire I'm sorry, the police department is down by seven or eight officers. Now, if I talk to the people in my wards, they're clearly totally unhappy with that because they pick up the newspaper. And 20 years ago, I can remember there would be years, five to 10 years at a time where there would be no murders in Sheboygan. And now it's getting like it's uh, an attempted murder or a murder, it seems like it's every other month almost. There's high speed chases, there's drug problems and so on. And, and the people are asking me, how can you not set priorities when you do the budget how can you ignore the, uh, the crime problems that we are have, having? So my suggestion is next year, you might want to have a plan and you might want to stick to it throughout the whole process and the plan should look something like this. We should set priorities. We should say which services are absolutely essential and then agree to fund those and then start looking at, at areas where we may have to cut because the wolf is going to be at the door. We have just moved the timeline back again one year. If the state comes through with the $800,000 cut, we can't keep stealing or borrowing, whatever you want to call it, from the reserve fund because that's our kitty for the, for the city and it's going to hurt our bond rating. We can't use that money forever. We've, we're trying to take now from the cable fund and so on for operations and so on. You have to save emergency money for other things besides just the immediate crisis at hand. How can we solve this long-term budget problem in Sheboygan? It isn't actually uh, the, the necessarily the city council's fault completely. The, the problem really is employee costs. We just can't afford the contracts that we have. The employee costs for the city are going up all the time faster than city revenues. There's only two ways that we can bring this situation under control, and that would be literally to have employee wage freezes for three years and then have an approach to the health insurance problem that other people are using. The evidence that I've seen on the internet and so on says that the employee contribution to the health plan doesn't work as a controlling measure for health costs, that the most effective measure is very high deductibles and very high co-pays. And so I suggest that we start developing a long-term plan instead of just having a plan and then changing it at the last second to fit our needs and try to follow through with it and solve the budget crisis instead of having it postponed one year after another. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? 
Okay. Oh, Alderman one right flag. One more. I want to thank both the, the non-reps as well as all the reps, uh, the union labor groups that have come so forward so far uh, for uh, keeping the wolf at, at the door for one more year uh, and not letting him in. Um, but um, <clears throat> I really thank those, the, the, the groups that have a net decrease in their human resources cost and kept made the changes within the, the union itself to keep all the positions versus those that actually have a net increase uh, that the city has to outlay to keep all the positions there. I think uh, some of the other uh, labor leaders need to um, d discuss amongst themselves why, why some unions have priority over others. Uh, and uh, I'm, I, I understand the sympathy, with, especially with the firefighters, that they have already made cuts so far. I sympathize with that. Um, Unfortunately, I think that's the way that the future is going to go. Um, I will vote for this because they did come through and make some cuts, but I think that you know, long term we are going to have to look at some layoffs, some cutbacks, uh, in some ways that we simply can't keep increasing our labor costs year by year. Thank you. That is why we made $2.2 .2 million in cuts this year already. Here's one thing, Alderman Doyle. The state is coming out with a plan. <laughs> They want a state plan and health insurance. Now, I don't know if it's going to benefit us or not, but it's in the works right now, and we're working on that. Milwaukee claims their health insurance only goes up like 3% a year, where other municipalities have been going up 10, 11, 15% a year. And they are trying to push a plan out there that it goes across the state for health insurance. Now, obviously, some aren't going to get the same coverage they have now. I mean, you know, some of the communities have very good coverage. Other communities don't have as good as coverage. But that's going to be part of the part of the deal, where it's comparable all the way across the state. So we're looking into a lot of different things for next year. Yes, we saved one more year, but I got to compliment the unions and, like I said, the nine reps for stepping forward and doing that. They didn't have to do that. Did we make cuts? We eliminated positions this year for that 2.2 billion. Is that the million? Is that the right way to go? In some ways, yes it is, but do you like to lay off people? No, you don't like to lay off people and make them lose their jobs. But that's the fact of life right now. When the state takes $844,000 away from you, well actually it's over a million with transportation funds, and next year we're gonna look at it too, but next year we will have a larger tax base in the city of Sheboygan that will help somewhat. And we will look at it very close next year. But I guarantee you one thing, we will set up a committee to look at this health insurance. A committee to look at the health insurance and if we can save, if it would save the city of Sheboygan money. Secondly, after the first of the year, we are going to start working on a new budget for this city immediately. So we are not caught like other uh, municipalities across the state. Or if the state does make changes, that we are prepared and ready to go with those changes for next year. So, Alderman Warner. I thank you. Uh, I don't agree with everything my friend Jerry stated tonight, but he makes a lot of good points and I think it should be noted that, uh, as, as you stated, Your Honor, uh, after the first of the year, we're starting on the budget for next year right away. That's the discussion we had a few weeks ago. And uh, we know we're up, up against the wall again in 05, and the intent is to start working on it early and put together a group of people that will address the needs and prioritize uh, some of the situations in the city and see what they can come up with. So, Correct. Thanks. Alderman Stephan? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, echo the comments we've heard, thanking the, both the non-reps and the, uh, the unions, and everybody's pretty much come forward. Uh, I think uh, Ed mentioned that the police union, I think, was the one we hadn't heard from, and they're formulating something. I guess I would just challenge the council. The one group I haven't heard from is us. Um, I have limitations with my employer. Whatever I make, the majority on this council, the majority of it, I have to give to charity, so it wouldn't be fair for me to come up with a number, but I think somebody should come up with a number, and I would support no matter what it is. Thank you. Good point. If there's another discussion, Pat, would you call the roll, please? Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Gwenninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Bonnet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Grinfleisch? Aye. 11 ayes, 1 no. Motion carried. 1542 by Alderman Groff, Winninger, Bonnet, Doyle and Stefan authorizing entering to a tax collection agreement with Sheboygan County for 2003-2004. Alderman Winninger. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to pass the resolution. Second. Moved and seconded the resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Van Akron. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Warner. 
Winninger, Bauman, Bonet, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Manny, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Moody, Rinfleisch, Stephen. 12 eyes. Motion carried. 1547 RC by Public Protection and Safety recommending amending the no parking area regulations to add, excuse me, both sides of Union Avenue from South 24th Street to South 25th Street. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee and pass the ordinance. Move to second to accept and adopt the report of committee and pass the does, ordinance. Does he want to take 1549? You want to take 49? 48. Sure, on that I would make a motion that uh, for 1549 that the general ordinance be put upon its passage as well as 1548. Okay, we have a motion before us. Under discussion, Your Honor, uh, on 1547, this is in reference to a request uh, by Old Wisconsin Sausage Food or Old Wisconsin Food Products Company for some changes across the street from their plant. Uh, the company has experienced difficulty with its semi-trucks using the docks when cars are parked across the street. And the neighbors in this area were contacted and had no objections to the change. Uh, this change will help increase safety when the trucks must use the docks and will only be effective on weekdays. Parking will be allowed on Saturdays, Sundays, and holidays. The committee recommends passage on that one. And on 1549, this is a general ordinance relating to residential daytime parking privileges so as to add the east side of South 13th Street from Maryland Avenue to New Jersey Avenue and the west side of South 13th Street from Illinois Avenue to New Jersey Avenue and both sides of Maryland Avenue from South 13th Street to South 14th Street to the uh, com commuter impacted parking regulations. This area has been impacted by employees of Rockline parking on the residential streets rather than using the company's parking lots. And the people that live here do not have access to park in front of their homes, even right in front of their own houses or even close for most hours of the day. Uh, there's been many problems with excessive automobile and semi-truck traffic in the area. And this change will help the residents immensely by giving them back their neighborhood. Uh, this is, is a result of another problem-solving effort by the traffic department of the police department, Sergeant Tarkowski, as well as the community policing unit and the residents in the area who've worked together to come up with a solution to this. Uh, Rockland does have plenty of parking in the parking lots, but it just was a little easier for people to park on the street, I think, when they get off of work or something like that, and that's why they were parking up there. So this should help that neighborhood out. And on 1548, uh, this is adding a, a 15 minute parking limits it's to add the north side of Wisconsin Avenue from the west curb line of Broughton Drive to a point 100, and, 100 feet west thereof uh, from 5 a.m. daily to 6 p.m. daily. Currently, it is 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., and people get, this is by the YMCA, people get there before the 6 a.m. time frame and park up those spots, and people can't drop off their people at the daycare center at the Y between that time because they're all parked full. So this will uh, open that up a little bit so people can get in and out in the 15-minute regulations. <coughs> Thanks. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, would you call the roll? Longaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weininger? Aye. Bauman? Bonet, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Manny, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Moody, Rinfleisch, Stephen, Van Akron, Aye. 12 eyes. Motion carried. 1653. Alderman Bonet. Uh, yes, Your Honor. I'd like to make a motion to file the RO 1653, please. It's been moved and seconded to file. This is RO by City Clerk submitting communication from the Sheboygan Citizens Action Group filing complaints that the mayor and the city attorney have violated the Sheboygan Code of Ethics, and it would went to the Ethics Board. Under discussion. Alderman Reinflesch. I'd like to make an alternate uh, motion to send uh, this communication to the Ethics Board. Pardon? I'd like to make an uh, alternate motion that we send this. Um, That's where it would have went to the Ethics Board. Right. Yeah. So I motion to file takes precedence over there. Okay, thank you. I have something I'd like to say on that before we vote on this. I serve all the people of the city of Sheboygan. In my role as a public servant, I am committed to the ideals of democracy and open government. Therefore, I am interested in giving this group of citizens the full benefit that an investigation of the complaint will be provided. 
I am confident that the investigation will disclose that my conduct and that of the city attorneys was ethical and consistent with our duties as elected officials. I will cooperate fully in the investigation, and I look forward to the full and complete resolution of the serious charges raised by this complaint. I look forward to carrying out my duties as mayor during the investigation and for a long time to come. As part of those duties, I recommend that the committee of the whole chairperson appoint an independent audit group approved by the Common Council to investigate the ethics complaint and report back to the Common Council on the results of the investigation within 60 days. This process will provide a greater assurance to all our citizens that a fair and a complete investigation was undertaken. I believe this independent audit should reveal both the ethics complaint issue as well as the city's role in the Blue Harbor project. We need to ensure our citizens that their tax dollars are being invested ethically and legally. I, as mayor, am committed to being the top watchdog for the taxpayers of this great city. And I welcome an independent audit on whether our work on Blue Harbor meets the ethical and legal standards to which we all hold to ourselves. Until this investigation is complete, I will make no further public comments on this matter as I was elected to serve the public's interest and to do the work of the people. This issue will not be a distraction to the progress and opportunities that lie ahead for our future community. Thank you. Alderman Warner. I uh, thank you, Honor. I will support filing this. Uh, I guess I also support having an independent group unrelated to this council, the South Pier project, or any of these issues look into this and give us an unbiased report of the facts. Thank you. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I applaud your, 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 your words about having an independent audit board in addition to the ethics board. With, this, with our citizens concerned, I think it would be not good of us to simply say, sorry, we're not going to address this, we're going to file it. I think we need to at least have a meeting of the ethics board and give credence and substance to what they're saying. Maybe we, it will all turn out just fine, but we have to pay attention to what they're saying rather than just filing it. But I think the idea of also an independent audit is a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Another discussion, would you call the roll, please? Yeah. Oh, excuse me, Alderman Reinfleisch? Yes, uh, I'll second what Marilyn had said. Um, uh, this is a political body, uh, and it does have differences of opinions. And uh, I think one concern people may have is that uh, an investigation of the ethics board may get politicized. And I would hope that that's not the case. But I do think it's strong. It's, we do need to call the ethics board at least to discuss the issue at hand and look at the ethical aspects of that. Uh, and if there is an independent investigate, investigator group that can look at all the dealings better than a body of 16 can do, I would also second that as well. But I do think we have Thank to you. meet as the ethics board. Thank you. Alderman <clears throat> Stefan. I guess I'm a little confused. Um, we are the ethics board. I mean, what are we going to do? We're going to meet and, and what? I mean, I don't know what we're going to, you know, we've got this document, which, I mean, I think it's frivolous. I, I agree with Marilyn and, and I guess Eric that I'm not sure you should just get rid of it. But on the other hand, I don't know what, you know, what are we going to do? We're going to spend money calling in the Carls and Brady people, calling in the Blue Harbor people. I, I just think <laughs> you got to do something. And I guess I'd rather, you know, I just think it looks better for the public if it's not us doing it because you know, we're here now, we're the ethics committee. We could discuss it right now on the floor. If you wanted to, if somebody said, let's move it forward, let's discuss it. But I mean, I think we all know it's pretty frivolous, but yet this, the public doesn't know that. So I guess, you know, I'm gonna support, regrettably, the motion to file. And then, you know, I, I can, could congratulate the mayor for coming up with the idea of the independent thing, because I, I really think, you know, 
it's a it's a no-win situation for us, but it certainly is a better idea than us looking at our, you know ourselves. So I'm going to support the motion to file. Thank you, Alderman Doyle. Uh, yes, Your Honor, uh, we we could file it, and then uh, when the report is back from this committee, Alderman Warner could call a meeting of the committee of the whole at that time. Could that's what I'm hoping that will happen. To it. That's what I'm hoping that'll happen. If I knew, they'll come back to the committee, to the ethics committee. So. Sure. Alderman Warner. I uh, thank you, Your Honor. I, I too felt, you know, I got this thing on. I heard about this late Friday afternoon and uh, picked up my council documents. I didn't have a chance to really look at it until Saturday. But uh, my first impression was, well, we're going to be dealing with this in committee the whole as ethics board. And I thought about it a little more and I read this thing and then I compared it to the actual ordinance that we have in the city. And it, to me, it became clear that there's a little more something here than what you would call normal political speak on this document. I see it as a personal attack for reasons that I can't explain and I'm not trying to stretch it out that way. But in my mind, uh, I smell rotten eggs in this communication and I think it's political rotten eggs. And in my mind, if we want to get down to the bottom of this, we should take the politics out of it, give it to an independent group, they can report back to the council and let's see what the real truth is. There may be people involved in here. There's a lot of things to deal with. In, in an ethics investigation like this. I've spent most of the weekend reading and looking and documenting a lot of things here, and I think we'd be far better served by having an independent group look at this. Uh, to bring it into the committee of the whole, I would not, I would do my job, period, uh, in that aspect, but I really think it's in the best interest of the city to put this behind us and at the same time find out what the facts are. Because I think there may be some people involved in this that perhaps uh, don't want things known. Thank you. Alderman Rainflesh. Uh, Pat, then perhaps you could clarify for us the procedure to establish a investigative independent board. Um, is it a mayor's appointment? Would it go to uh, the council to appoint? Uh, what is the process or procedure? I did not see them in the, in the city code statutes. Steve. It's kind of awkward for me to be even discussing what your procedure would be. Uh, but I, I guess. What I would see is uh, the council, somebody coming forward with a resolution to create a, a committee, a, a citizens committee or something like that, that would be uh, presented to the council and acted upon by the council. Uh, and in that resolution, you could indicate uh, who would be uh, responsible for making appointments of the citizens on the committee. Um, basically what I asked the committee to hold chairperson to do and bring it back for council approval. Okay, another discussion. Would you call the roll, please? Thank you. And I will be to file. Warner? Aye. Weininger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? No. Moody? Aye. Rinfleisch? I'm sorry? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. 11 ayes, one no. Motion carried. 1154 will go to finance. Other matters, Steve? Yeah, comment on the uh, four on the charter communications thing. Does, you know, first blush, you say, why are they submitting this communication here? It's uh, more than two years away from the uh, franchise agreement expiring. The franchise agreement runs till September of 2006, but uh, the federal statutes uh, provide that that's kind of how the process starts. There's a window that the, the uh, franchisee has between 30 months and 36 months before the franchise is up to start the renewal process again. So that's what that is. 1655 is a communication from Jay Barnard, 1132 Oakland Avenue, relative to a safety concern regarding the intersection of Union Avenue, South 17th Street, and South Business Drive. Public protection and safety. 1656 is a resolution authorizing the city to enter into contract for obtaining medical stop loss insurance. Lies over. 
1657 as a resolution to authorize the transfer of appropriations in the 2003 budget. That lies over. 1658 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a claim from Mark Koistra for alleged damages to his automobile when his wife drove over a manhole cover, which then gave out. Special Committee on Risk Management. Moved and seconded to adjourn under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? 